Okay, let's maybe uh, fuse the actual size again. And I think we're almost done with the diffuse map. Uh, we might want to bring out a little bit more of the scratch uh, scratches in here. Okay, so let's maybe go down to the gray mask layer here. I'm gonna click on the mask. And we'll just do maybe do a levels on the mask here to uh, bring that out a little more. Okay, so let's do a levels adjustment here. And we'll just play with this a little bit uh, until we can bring some of those scratches out a bit. Let's maybe take this down. We don't want to lighten it up too much. Let's do maybe around 0.76 or so. And let's bring this down a little bit more as well. And you can see those scratches coming out as we bring that down. Okay, so that brought some of that detail back through and that looks pretty good. I think we'll go with something like this. And you can play with that a little bit more if you want. Okay, let's maybe just adjust the mask on the text as well. Let's go up and click on that. And for this one, let's maybe just do a brightness and contrast on it. Okay, let's bring the brightness down a little bit. Let's maybe take the contrast up as well. I just want to sharpen that up a little bit more here. Okay, you can see it's uh, kind of coming through there. Dial that back a bit. And something like that looks fine. Okay, so we'll take the contrast up to 100. We'll just do the brightness down a little bit to about negative 10 and hit OK. All right, yeah, like I mentioned before, you can just move that mask around if you want to uh, adjust the position. Okay, so let's maybe uh, add a little bit of uh, more of a shadow or whatever to this uh, glass panel over here. All right, let's also turn our guide back on. And I'm just gonna do a selection around these two pieces here. Okay, let's also create a new layer. Okay, we'll call this uh, maybe glass. Uh, dirt or whatever and let's also bring that, bring that down and we'll put it underneath the text layer just to keep things organized and for this one let's grab maybe uh, a black color here and let's grab a brush okay and let's do maybe just a soft brush here and we'll take that up a little bit in size Okay, I'm just going to paint a little bit in here. So I'm going to click outside of this, hold down shift, and let's click at the other side, and that'll uh, do a straight line between those uh, clicks. All right, let's get that a little bit more straight. Okay, and we'll just do that on the uh, top and bottom, as well as each side here. So same thing there and here. And we'll add a little bit up and down as well. Just want to catch the edges a bit. Okay. And we'll uh, maybe uh, dumb that down quite a bit here. Let's deselect everything. Okay, and let's maybe just uh, take this down a little bit here. Let's maybe actually try a different blending mode. Uh, let's maybe try... Just gonna flip through these for a second. Find something that works. Uh, soft light looks pretty good here. That kind of fades it out for us. We'll take it down a little bit on the opacity as well. Okay, we just want to add a little bit of uh, color variation to it. Okay, so we'll do a soft light with about 80 or so on the opacity. And let's turn off our guide. Okay. Oops. Okay, so let's save this out again. And let's go back into Max here and check it out. Okay, let's just turn this realistic shading off for a second and see how that looks. Okay, I'm just gonna do another quick test render here. And we have a little bit more uh, contrast in the texture, uh, which is what we want. Okay, we don't wanna go too over the top on it, but uh, that looks a little bit better than what we had. Okay, let's check out the back here. And it'll look a lot better once we have a spec and bump map in here as well as the opacity map, which will uh, control the transparency of the glass up here. Okay, so we're looking pretty good. Let's go back to the Photoshop here. And uh, I don't think I'll cover um, the process of painting in scratches. Um, you can do that if you want. The only reason I'm gonna skip it on the tutorial is just because it's gonna take uh, a lot of time to manually paint in scratches by hand. 
Okay, and we would want to do it on maybe the corner sections here where this uh, trim is split. Okay, and if I was going to do that, I would just use uh, probably kind of a dark gray color or medium gray, something like that. And then I usually like to use a really small uh, one or two pixel brush, a hard brush here. And then you can just kind of uh, scratch it up. Let's just add a new layer there. You can kind of just, uh, use that to scratch in detail. Okay, but that's going to take quite a bit of time, so I'm actually going to skip that out because we still have three other maps to make. Okay, so if you want to add the scratches, you can, uh, but I think I'll skip it here. Okay, so let's just save this one more time. And uh, that'll be our final diffuse map for the tutorial. And you can definitely put a little bit more detail into uh, some of these things here. Okay, so the next thing we'll do is move on to the bump map. Let's maybe just go up and we'll save another copy of this. So we'll go down to save as, and we'll call this shield bump. Okay, we'll start with the diffuse map so uh, we can quickly make the bump map from it without having to redo everything from scratch. Okay, so save that out. Okay, and we're not gonna need all of our layers here. Let's uh, maybe turn a few of them off. Okay, let's maybe get rid of the text. We don't really need to have that on the bump map. Um, the paint wouldn't be thick enough that it would actually bumped out, so we're gonna get rid of that layer by turning it off. Uh, we also don't need this uh, one here, which is just a blank layer. We'll delete that. We don't want the glass dirt. Turn that off. Okay, and let's go down to the bottom here. And the first thing we're gonna do is just desaturate a few of these layers. Okay, so I'm gonna go to that rubber layer there, and we'll go up to image adjustments and desaturate. And you can do that with the shift control G. Okay, so desaturate the layer. We'll just get rid of uh, any color in these layers as well. So control shift U. Also desaturate this blue layer here. Okay. And let's figure out which one of these we uh, need to have. Okay, let's maybe get rid of this layer here. We can turn that one off. I don't think we really need to have that in the bump map. Could maybe actually get rid of the rubber layer as well. That's not really doing much for us. So we'll turn that off as well. Okay, so let's go down to the base here and let's maybe just grab a medium gray color here. Let's just do a straight medium, 128 gray. Okay, and we're just gonna fill uh, the base layer with that color, just to lighten things up a bit more. Okay, we'll go up to the mask here. And let's maybe do uh, a brightness and contrast or even levels adjustment on the mask for this layer here, the gray one. Okay, so back up to adjustments and we'll do a levels. Okay, and we'll just uh, kind of tweak this out a little bit here to intensify it a bit more. We'll get rid of some of the uh, contrast in there. We want to keep most of it, but we'll just kind of sharpen things up a little bit more. Take that down just a little bit. And we'll start with something like this, maybe. Okay, that should give us uh, some nice scratches uh, dense into the model. Okay, we won't do anything to the glass here. We're just going to leave that a solid color. Um, we don't want that to have any bump map on it. And I think we'll just leave pretty much an overall scratch on our scratches on everything here okay let's also maybe get rid of the AO map we don't really want to have that on the bump map because any of these black areas are actually going to push into the surface okay everything that's white pops out everything that's dark uh, pushes in okay so we don't want to have these uh, it pushed in where these bars are sitting as well as these clips all right so let's turn that off okay and let's just maybe save this and we'll uh, Give it a shot in max it's going to be pretty intense probably but uh, we'll see how it looks so let's just save this out go back into max here let's hit m and we'll still open up our shader here i'm just going to double click on this to blow it up and we'll go down to the maps roll out here and into the bump channel and we'll choose bitmap here okay and we'll pick that shield bump we just made open that up uh hit ok to collapse the layers okay and you can immediately see that that uh, gave us quite a bit of bump on the surface here 
Okay, that's going to be really intense. If we just do a test render here, uh, you can see what that looks like. Okay, so we have to tone this way, way down. Okay, so let's go up a level and we'll tone this down to say maybe 15. And we'll see if that looks a little bit more realistic. Okay, still too much. Let's try 10. And that's a little bit better, but uh, we could probably take it down even a little bit more. Uh, let's go down to maybe like five. Okay, we want it to be somewhat subtle. We just want to give the metal a little bit of a pitted look. Okay, another thing we'll do here is actually switch our renderer. Let's hit F10. Open up the render dialog here. We're going to the renderer and we'll switch our filter from area to Catmull ROM. Okay, and this is a really good filter if you're doing any kind of uh, concretes or woods. It, it really brings out the detail. Okay, so set to the Catmull ROM and we'll just render that again. Okay, you can already see that looks a little bit better. Let's close that up. Uh, another thing we do is let's go back into the map here and we'll take our blurring on the bump map down a bit. Let's do like 0.65. Okay, and we'll see how that looks. Okay, so that'll make it a little bit more sharp and a little bit more crisp. Okay, let's just uh, close it up. We'll spin around the back here and see how that looks. Okay, not bad. Uh, we still obviously need to adjust the lights as well as add the other maps. Okay, so we're getting a pretty nice pitted effect here. And it could be dumbed down maybe a little bit more. But overall, I think it looks uh, pretty good for a uh, bump map here. Let's just do one more at the front. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Uh, I think we'll go with something like this for starters. So 0.65 in the blur, uh, and about five or so on the bump. And you can maybe even take that down a little bit less. Uh, it depends on how rough you want it to look. Okay, so that'll take care of the uh, bump map for now. Let's go back into Photoshop here. I'm just gonna fit this back to the screen. And we'll really quickly here make an opacity map before we do the spec map. Uh, the spec map's going to take a little bit more work, but the opacity map will be really simple. Um, let's turn off the layers over here, everything but the glass layer. Okay, so uh, get rid of that. Um, we're going to go over to the color swatch here. We're going to pick a solid white. Okay, we're going to fill our base color with this solid white color. Let's just pick that again. Okay, fill that. And the transparency of the glass is going to be controlled by the shade of gray we have here over the glass section okay we don't want to make it fully black here or else the glass will be fully transparent um, everything that's white is going to be more opaque or completely uh, non-transparent and uh, we want to just kind of have a medium shade in here for the glass so we can kind of get uh, the transparency that we want okay so let's maybe start with a medium I'm just going to do about a 128 medium gray. Okay, we'll grab that glass layer. We're just going to select that with the magic wand and we'll just fill that with the paint bucket. Okay, and we'll hit Control D to deselect that and we'll save this out. Save as and we'll call this opacity. Okay, and save that as PSD. Okay, and we'll go into max here and just see how this looks. So let's go back into the material editor, go down to the opacity slot, and we'll load up a bitmap in there. Pick the opacity. Hit OK. All right, and we'll just uh, do a test render right away. OK, and you can already see through that glass there at the top. OK, and you can see there's a little bit of a weird uh, artifact here in the viewport from the transparency. But that's OK, we'll just uh, zoom in a bit and see how transparent this is. OK, so you can see we're seeing through there to the back. And we'll spin around the other side here. And just take a render from this side. Okay, and I think it could go a little bit more transparent. Uh, we don't want it to be too fogged up looking. Okay, so let's go back into Photoshop. And we'll make this a little bit more dark. Okay, so let's take this down. Let's try about maybe around 80 or so on the RGB. We'll just fill that again and save over top. Okay, back in the max. Let's zoom in a little bit on this and do another test render. Okay, and let me get a better angle on there. Okay, so you can see that's a lot more uh, transparent there in the middle.
Okay, and let's maybe darken up just a little bit more here. Let's open this back up. We'll take it down a little bit more. Let's do maybe around 45, 46, 47, something like that. Okay, and we'll fill that one more time and save over it. Okay, back to max. And just render that out again. Okay, so that's looking closer to what we want. Let's back off here a bit and do a full render of it. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's check it out from the back. Okay, so I think that's uh, pretty good for the glass. Um, and you can adjust that uh, color here based on whatever you want it to look like and uh, depending on how much transparency you want in there. Okay, so I think we'll leave it like that and that pretty much is all we need to do for the opacity map. So it's really, really simple. Okay, so the last map we're gonna make is the spec.